Hello, everyone. I'm Sign One News anchor Vanessa Paloma Bajarnik. Here's a quick look at the top trending international news stories making headlines today. If you post an interesting comment about this update, we may add it at the bottom of the screen. The anger and outrage in Iran continues to spread after a 22 year old woman named Masa Amini died while in custody of Iran's morality police. She was stopped and detained by police on September 13th in Tehran. She was detained because authorities say she was allegedly wearing her hijab wrong. These are pictures of Amini in a re-educating center being confronted by a dress code expert who touches Amini's clothes. Then you see Amini collapsing to the floor. She fell into a coma and died. Officials say she died from internal injuries. Iranian authorities say she had a heart attack. But her family says she was healthy with no heart conditions. Amini's death sparked massive protests in Iran, mostly led by women who were leading the call for change and freedom. Women have been ripping off their hijabs, waving them in the air, cutting their hair in public, and protesting without their shirts on, topless. They're rising up for their rights in a way this generation has never seen before. But even those who are just watching joined in as well. An old woman was seen waving her headscarf, softly chanting death to the supreme leader. And apparently the threat of punishment by jailing or flogging hasn't stopped their acts of defiance. Iranian meter reports at least 50 people have died in the protests. Russians are revolting against President Putin's military mobilization of its military reservists. Some say they oppose being drafted to fight in Russia's deadly onslaught in Ukraine. But others say if they are called, they will go. Hundreds of anti-war protesters have been arrested. And people are fleeing to the border and airports in an attempt to flee the country. Sources say Moscow is now trying to recruit more men to fight in Ukraine. On Saturday, Putin signed a new order saying any soldier who deserts or refuses to fight during mobilization could be sent to prison for 10 years. Russian authorities also say Putin signed into law the ability to access Russian nationality of foreigners who enlist for a period of one year. Social media is now filled with images of vehicles backed up for miles trying to leave the country. Kremlin officials say the images of people fleeing the country are fake news. 
but the mobilization is taking place anyway. There are many images of women crying as their husbands and sons are bussed away to fight in the war. Before and after images of a Ukrainian soldier held by Russia as a prisoner of war were released to a Twitter account on Friday. And we want to warn you, the after picture may be disturbing to some viewers. The before photo shows Mikhailo Dianov wearing green military clothes with a black and gray goatee and a healthy looking full face. In the after photo, Dianov is seen without a shirt. His skin is pale and he's lost so much weight, his ribs can be seen poking through his skin. The picture was taken in a Kyiv hospital. No additional details of Dianov's detainment were disclosed. Rosa Elena Bolnia, former First Lady of Honduras, has been sentenced to 14 years in prison. She is the wife of former President Porfirio Lobo. She was charged with fraud and corruption. Court officials say between 2010 and 2014, Bonilla embellished $600,000 by making false contracts towards an initiative to provide shoes for poor children. Instead, court documents say the money was used to pay credit cards, her kids' school fees, and personal surgeries. She must now pay all of the money back. Her lawyers say they will appeal the sentence. Officials in Uganda have declared an outbreak of Ebola. Health officials are investigating 11 suspicious deaths in one month. The youngest death was a one-year-old child. There are also eight suspected cases being treated in a health facility. The WHO's Africa office is investigating the cases and sending staff to the affected areas. The country has experienced four Ebola outbreaks over the past 20 years. The last reported outbreak was in 2012. The deadliest was in 2000 with 242 deaths. Scientists in Australia are working hard to save 230 whales that mysteriously stranded themselves on a beach in Tasmania. Only about 40 of the whales survived. Some of the whales had to be euthanized. And rescuers say a small number of whales that were released back into the water came back and stranded themselves on the beach again. The dead whales are being tied together and disposed of several miles from shore. Scientists still don't know what caused the whales to strand themselves.
Today is the last day of the World Federation of the Deaf's week-long celebration of International Week of Deaf People. For the past 70 years, the celebration falls on the last full week of September. And the celebration is designed to unite deaf communities and deaf cultures, celebrate sign languages all over the world, remind local, national, and international governments of deaf people's rights, and open up dialogue so deaf citizens are not excluded from government, social affairs, and schools. This year's theme is Building Inclusive Communities for All. Today's sub-theme is Deaf Leadership for Tomorrow. Here's the official video from WFD's website explaining today's theme. To learn more about WFD and International Week of Deaf People, head to this website, wfdeaf.org. Sign One News will be broadcasting international news updates every Sunday. A big thank you to our Sign One News app supporters. You help make this broadcast happen. You can download the Sign One News app by heading to the App Store or Google Play Store on your smartphone. And you can also watch on Apple TV, Amazon, and Roku.